Greetings, Pearl citizens. It is I, your fearless leader, Will the Chill, coming to you live once again from the Pearl capital of the world, Austin, Texas. Some of you may remember me by my legal name, Will Braswell, and I'm here to bring you episode number 10 of the Pearl Town Hall. This is our live Pearl web-based TV show, bringing you all the latest in Pearl news, plans, software, and everything exciting under the sun related to Pearl. Today, we have a uh, relatively informal episode compared to some of our previous episodes. We have now officially completed our review of the Pearl Community Roadmap. So that was episodes one through nine, covering all of the different sections and various subsections related to the new roadmap for development of the Pearl community and development of, uh, of Pearl as a whole. So if you haven't already watched those episodes, you probably need to go ahead and go back and, and watch them now. And uh, if you have watched them, thank you for joining us and uh, hopefully you were giving us your interactive comments. So uh, speaking of which, if anybody uh, would like to make live comments, then uh, you are welcome to do so at any time during this video's initial broadcast. And uh, if I'm able to, I will respond right there and then live to you here via the video stream. <clears throat> so today, oh, hello, Mr. Mokapati. Good to see you, sir. As always, my good friend. Thank you for joining us. Um, we have a... Uh, as I said, kind of a uh, less formal show to bring to you today. <clears throat> we will be discussing um, just a few topics related to Pearl News and uh, some of the some of the uh, posts that we've had in our Pearl group this week and so forth. As I mentioned, we have already uh, completed now our initial review of the Pearl Community Roadmap. If you have not already seen it, please point your web browser to pearlcommunity.org. And hopefully uh, you will have all kinds of interesting discoveries and questions about that, and you can get in contact with us and uh, let us know what you think. So, yes, today we're going to be um, reviewing a number of posts that have come out this week related to Pearl. First of all, it would be uh, remiss of me to, uh, uh, if I failed to mention, that of course we have the upcoming uh, Pearl Conference, although it's, it's not really a Pearl Conference for two major reasons, um, but before we get into that, uh, it, it, it is... Uh, at least worth mentioning that we will be having the the official uh, Pearl Conference coming up. Um, it was supposed to be in Houston. However, uh, we're not able to do that this year here in, in beautiful Texas because of the coronavirus COVID-19 global pandemic quarantine. I just like to string together as many words as I can to make it sound like an even bigger problem than it already is. Um, so yes, we will, uh, we will not be able to do the, the uh, actual real life Pearl Conference this year, but we will have another thing, uh, which is called the Conference in the Cloud. And it will be June 24th to 26th, and um, will we'll be online only. So um, the, it, it's not a real Pearl Conference because it's not in real life. So it's a virtual online Pearl Conference. And 
that's fine because we shouldn't be meeting anyway due to the coronavirus. Um, but nevertheless, it's it's not the real Pearl Conference in Houston. It's it's a different one. Um, it's organized by essentially the same group of people, and it is it is uh, it is the the official Pearl Conference uh, that's put on by the Pearl Foundation. So that's an important distinction to make. Uh, the the other reason why I somewhat jokingly say it's it's not really the real Pearl Conference. Uh, well, it's it's not only is it not in person. That's that's one issue um, due to the virus, but also this is now um, being called the uh, Pearl and Raku Conference. So if you have not seen the episode of Pearl Town Hall, which is all about Raku, uh, formerly known as Pearl Six. Uh, you probably need to go ahead and watch that, and that's the very previous episode to this one, episode number nine. So you should have no problem looking that up and finding all the information about that. Now, um, we are uh, we're going to to just leave it at that for now, and and not give too much. Uh, emphasis or emphasis to to what's happening with uh, with that particular activity we we are very thankful for everyone that takes part in that uh, Pearl conference and uh, and our own dear Benny Braswell will be giving a talk in fact so uh, I will be tuning in at least for that one talk um, if not more um, and a thank you, everyone, who is joining us here. Um, hello, Zarul. Um, hello again, Mr. Mokapati. Hello, um, Ian, or Ian, however you say your name. Sorry if I'm getting anybody's name uh, pronounced wrong. But uh, feel free to, to let us know. Um, let me know if I'm saying your name wrong. <laughs> and, uh, and I will take care of it. Um, Yes, so uh, uh, I am very thankful for all of you um, joining us, and uh, uh, we're, we're thankful for every week that we're able to come to you live from the Pearl Capital of the World, Austin, Texas. And we're very sad that we're not able to have the Pearl Conference in Houston this year, but we give our best wishes and regards to everyone who's having the Pearl and Raku Conference in the cloud. Uh, so we're going to move on to another, we're going to move on to another piece of news here. I've got several, they're all kind of smaller pieces uh, uh, to look at and think about, but still interesting. So there's uh, a new... There's a new Perl module for Twitter. So I just figured I would mention this because it's a general interest um, item here. But uh, the name of this particular piece of software is Mojo X Twitter. So it's, it's a big M, big X. And then the the scope uh, sign, which is two colons, and then Twitter with a big T. So Mojo X Twitter. Um, this is apparently uh, we've had a new blog post about this, and um, I'm looking at the blog post now. It looks like uh, it was posted by Polet Tix. I'm not sure who that is in real life, but if anybody knows, let me know. And the blog post says, After looking at how to post status on Mastodon with the addition of post with the addition of a Mojo user agent, it's residually useful to look at doing the same thing on Twitter. I say residually because I'd really like Mastodon to catch up more. The idea of not needed not needing, I suppose, to rely upon a company that makes business on our data is very attractive to me. Alas, 
they were the first and it's so easy to do. Without further ado, let's meet the code. And then it goes into the code that has the use Mojo X Twitter and it creates an API key, it creates an API secret key, an access token, an access token secret, all being taken from environmental variables. And then it has a simple call to a, an object oriented constructor, creating a new um, object, my Twitter agent, equals mojo x twitter arrow new and then uh, it sets up those same four pieces of data the two tokens and the two uh, keys and then it just uh, uses a data dumper to dump out a a request on that twitter agent with a post uh, getting called on the statuses slash update i guess that's a a path and then uh, a status that just has some text. In this case, he put the word whatever. I'm sure that could be anything. So, uh, so that's a very interesting, simple, short, straight, and forward um, usage of Perl to post directly onto Twitter. Pretty cool. It uses Mojolicious, um, which I have been using for some of my new uh, projects in the Perl programming language, and uh, and if you haven't used Mojolicious yet, you should you should look at it. Also, you should of course look at Catalyst and Dancer, um, and uh, and you can find this Twitter status linked from the Perl Weekly newsletter. Hello to uh, Mohammed and Gabor and everybody else at Pearl Weekly. Hi guys and gals. And, uh, and there was another item I was going to look at. There's a discussion happening on Reddit. This is now unrelated. Um, we're moving on to the next item in the news feed. The Pearl news feed. <clears throat> uh, yes. Uh, hello, Matthias. Thank you for joining us. And I'm trying to keep up with everybody who, uh, who is with us here. So I'm going to try and uh, read you guys a little bit off of Reddit here. And we'll see what this says. <clears throat> so there's a um, discussion or a debate right now. The name of the topic or the title of the post <clears throat> is Movable Type 5 Still a Viable Option? And um, the, the answer below is uh, perhaps pertinent to Perl programmers. <clears throat> but uh, let's, let's just read what this person had to say here real quick. This is posted by user Wizardry with a very unique spelling. I'll let you look that up. Here's the question. It's a bit long. Would using movable type 5 open source be a sensible option for a new website and blog. The most recent update was just over five years ago, and that was a security patch only. Version 5 would do everything I need, but I'm worried that, if it even installs properly in the first place, an update to the shared hosting I would be using would break the script and I wouldn't know how to fix it. The license for more recent versions cost $499 a year. I wouldn't mind paying around $100, but that is just too high for a startup. Are there any alternatives that publish static HTML files? Does anyone know what the license is for MT ver movable type versions 6 and 7 on GitHub? Are they updates to the open source version or do they require a paid license? And that was originally, that was apparently the original question. And then there is a, um, <clears throat> an edit one and an edit two made by the original author, presumably. The first edit says, can people please not suggest WordPress? It does not fit my needs. If it fits yours, I'm happy for you. But please don't try to convert me to your religion. Thank you. So that's pretty hilarious um, because, well, I mean, one thing, if, you, if you're not aware of, of the whole issues surrounding WordPress. Um, <clears throat> WordPress is written in one of the competitor languages to Perl, which is PHP. Hi, Drew. 
but yes, all of us that are Perl programmers um, would be, of course, wary of this because we want to use Perl software, not PHP software. Well, uh, I guess the, the issue there is that um, WordPress is, is wildly popular and whenever you set up a new server or whenever you look at a website template or whenever you get a new customer that is not a Perl specific customer, then they're probably going to ask you to use WordPress and you're going to have to have the good reasons not to do that. I will say, um, if someone is trying to pressure you into using WordPress, um, talk to me about Shiny CMS instead. It may be what they need, or maybe all they need is Mojolicious or a Catalyst application. Maybe they do need a Perl blog that could be used, built using RapidApp or, or any of the other um, up-and-coming Perl blogging systems that um, are, are perhaps better than, than movable type. Um, so, uh, yes, that's, uh, that's the first edit, okay, and, um, by the way, in case, uh, anybody does not know, um, just, uh, to let you know, movable type is, is Perl software that is, uh, kind of like a blogging or, or content management type system. Um, and it was, uh, it originally came out in 2001. Um, they do have a version 7.0, which is the latest version, um, released relatively recently, but it's proprietary software, um, written by a company that is, uh, called Six Apart. So, yes, I can understand that you want to develop, um, proprietary software in Perl. It's just that it, it kind of hurts us because, uh, we have all these other open source solutions written in PHP and Python and other, other languages. So <clears throat> you have to try and resist letting your customers get you to use the PHP solutions with, with uh, WordPress and you have to use something else. We have some questions about this. Um, Mr. Mokapati says, how does Mojolicious compare with Dancer 2? I can only give you a very surface level answer to that um, because I'm not exactly an expert in either one, but I do know a bit. The, uh, so, so these, uh, you've got several different web application frameworks and they all generally have some, something vaguely to do with uh, what we call MVC, Model View Controller frameworks and um, the the most uh, uh, mature of these for Perl is called Catalyst. Um, Hi JNAP and then after that you had uh, Mojolicious and Dancer and Dancer 2 which is the new version of Dancer. And uh, there are several other pieces of software that come into play and tangentially relate to a lot of this stuff like Mason and Template Toolkit and PSGI and Starman and a lot of other things that I don't even ex exactly understand how all of it directly relates um, to our current conversation, but I, I have used all of them a bit. I've used Catalyst the most, I've used Mojo second, and I've used Dancer just uh, to test it out. But to give the answer, um, the, there's sort of three different tiers, okay? Catalyst is the industrial strength, like super... A uh, high-powered um, uh, solution. It uses Moose, which is a, an object-oriented system for Perl that is very powerful. Um, it's also it may be more powerful than you need. But if if we had to build um, a web application and we had to know that it was capable of the absolutely most advanced processing possible in Perl, then we would probably need to choose Catalyst for that. Mojolicious um, is kind of the medium option. It's, uh, it's more along the lines of a pure Perl solution, so you don't have to use Moose or some other non-standard uh, or non-core components of, of Perl. Moose is pretty standard nowadays, but it's not part of Perl itself. It's an additional thing you add on top of Perl. You have to type use Moose. So... Um, with Mojolicious, you you uh, 
you don't have to use mousse and you don't have to use anything other than just pearl. So that's good. And I like Mojolicious for that reason. And last but not least, you have Dancer or Dancer 2. Um, and Dancer 2 has a specialty um, uh, thing that's called a, a DSL, a Domain Specific Language. And that is essentially a, a type of um, a miniature computer language that allows you to do to extend the Perl language and to do some things that are not easy to do um, in Perl itself. So there, you're adding additional keywords into the Perl language and so forth, which I should point out is another thing that Moose also does. And um, so both Moose and uh, and Dancer are both kind of um, adding stuff onto uh, on top of of pure pearl and mojo is a bit more of just the pure pearl so um, how how does mojo Alicious compare with dancer 2 they can probably do about the same things um, catalyst is uh, catalyst is more mature but it is missing a few of the more modern features that I know JNAP is kind of working on and I've been talking with him about a bit about that like asynchronous um, processing and so forth <clears throat> but um, they, they can all be used to build incredibly powerful Perl uh, web applications. So that's, uh, that's kind of what they all have in common, and that's an important thing. So you kind of have to look at all three of them and decide which of them is best for your specific project that you want to work on. And I can help anyone with that if you have more specific questions or if you need to to hire someone to help work on your web applications, then give me a call. Uh, another question from Mr. Mokopati. Curious if anyone is successful with Perl posting to Facebook. I assume this is um, related to the Perl posting to Twitter thing we spoke about a minute ago with the Mojo X Twitter module. And I have not used Perl to post to Facebook myself. Um, and uh, I, I don't know of anyone else uh, personally that has done it. Um, there, there is some relatively recent Facebook um, related software on, uh, on CPAN or metacpan.org if you're searching for it yourself. There's some really old stuff from, from over a decade in the past. But um, there's a few things from 2020 that, uh, that may be able to be used for that. Um, I don't know of any right off the top of my head that, uh, that would work out of the box. But I would not be surprised if there are. Um, there, there is a way to do authentication, and then you could probably write your own API interface without too much trouble. So... Again, um, if anybody has more information about that, please let us know. Type in your comments and, and uh, post your solutions. There's, uh, there is there's a um, module that may be uh, useful, which is the uh, Net Facebook OAuth 2, and that's a recent software on, uh, on MetaCPAN just from this year. So that may be something that could be used to build a Facebook API uh, of some kind. Um, let me know if, uh, if anybody's done it themselves or if anybody um, is uh, really in need of, of some professional assistance with that. We could probably make it happen. So uh, moving on, the, uh, the second edit about movable type here says, I have just had a chat with a potential web host, and they suggested upgrading from shared hosting to VPS hosting. If future updates to Perl or MySQL broke movable type open source, the cost per year would be less than half of a yearly license to movable type 6 or 7, and I could ask for any version of Perl, MySQL, etc. to be installed. I could also install an older version of another different software that's called AMPS, A-M-P-P-S, which is, uh, it's essentially just the stack of, of Apache, MySQL, 
MongoDB, um, PHP, Perl, and Python, or what we originally called LAMP, um, Linux, Apache, MySQL, and Perl, but which has now been spread out so much that it it's you know encompassing all these other things as well. Um, anyway, he says, I could install an older version of AMPs or similar to install movable type 5 locally and upload the updated files to my web host manually. So that's two fallback options. I would be interested in hearing about any other scripts similar to movable type 5 that could cost $150 per year or less. And we've had quite a few responses. I won't go into them all in depth, but it is worth pointing out that someone has uh, directed to a new Perl software, relatively new, um, called Statocles, and that is uh, located at uh, preaction.me forward slash Statocles, and that is, uh, is actually created by the uh, Perl programmer, Doug Bell, known as Preaction, and... Um, Staticles is used for creating static websites, and you could use it for a simple blog. Um, also, there's uh, <clears throat> there's other comments here. Someone said in reference to uh, not knowing how to fix the Perl software, someone said, well, you already have your answer. If you can't bear the risk, then don't do it. I don't think it makes economic sense to, to take the saved money in order to retain a knowledgeable programmer who would mitigate the risk. In other words, you should be able to do it yourself. Are there any alternatives to publish static HTML files? And the person says, there are literally thousands. You should think about your requirements and state them so that people can make useful suggestions. Um, and then also pointing out the fact that movable type um, open source version has been permanently discontinued in favor only of the proprietary version. So um, there's, there's a whole lot more discussion here, um, and uh, the, the, the original author, Wizardry, does say that he knows Perl better than PHP and so forth, and um, people are making a bunch of suggestions to him regarding the use of different server configurations, um, which are not actually related to, uh, to Perl software, but um, there, uh, there are other suggestions as well um, and uh, and I, I cannot personally vouch for for any of them um, but uh, you know it would be worth reviewing just to see what they what they have going for them I would say that uh, statically's is a very good option to to look into in this case and, um, and, uh, yeah, um, that's, you know, uh, there, there's lots of other options. There's not too many on Perl right now, but I would also point out Rapid App and Shiny CMS, which runs on top of Catalyst. So there you have it, a little bit of, uh, Perl blogging software news. Again, you can find this Reddit link, uh, on the, uh, Perl Weekly. So I was just going to mention one or two other interesting things. Hello, everyone, again. Hello, uh, Tracy Jacoby. Hello, uh, Viet and Sean and Jason and uh, Marcio. Welcome, everyone, to the Pearl Town Hall. We're just talking about some Pearl news today on our somewhat more informal show. And, um, and so, yes, we've been covering stuff about Twitter and uh, stuff about uh, the Pearl Conference and Perl blogging software, all stuff related, of course, to Perl. So uh, just a few more items of Perl news today to uh, round out our uh, somewhat briefer than the normal episode. But there's a couple other cool Perl things that, uh, that were posted today, or not today, but over the past week since our last episode. So um, uh, our own Dean Hampstead of Sydney Perlmongers, and now of uh, California relocated Sydney Perlmongers, uh, points out that there's a new release of the NRPE daemon, and um, this apparently uh, has been now switched 
from the often ill-fated IO socket SSL library to uh, a better default setting. I don't know exactly what that default setting is, but I do know the pain involved in trying to install IO socket SSL because sometimes it just crashes over and over and over again and it messes up all your other software and you have to code a special thing to force the install because it just won't work right. So, um, yes, that's, uh, that's something that could be of interest. That's on Meta CPAN um, under the Nagios NRPE uh, release. So, something that, um, that could be of some interest in general. And uh, this is apparently an implementation of NRPE in pure Perl. So, uh, yeah, that's um, something that, that uh, could be of interest, the Nagios Remote Plugin Executor. So, um, I, I have not used Nagios myself, um, but it is a, uh, a sort of network monitoring infrastructure, and um, it, uh, it, it helps alert you to when your um, network is messed up or if you have some other computers, maybe servers, applications, and services, and all that sort of thing. Um, and, and, of course, people have all kinds of uh, plugins for those things, and it's, it's for sysadmins and other people that have to uh, monitor their their networks. So that's some new Nagios uh, software, Pure Pearl, very cool, Pure Pearl, uh, came out recently. And um, uh, props to the author, Johan Vosberg. Sorry if I got your name wrong. Um, the Seal, he's known as The Seal, and, uh, and he, he does appear as a seal, a cartoon seal, um, on, on Meta Pan. So good job, Johan. The Seal, Vosberg, on that new release. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> oh, okay, we have some comments from Dean. Dancer is more for small stuff. Mojo is for larger websites. Very good insight. Keen insights from Dean the Machine Hampstead. Woo! Okay, uh, moving right along. Just a few other pieces today before we finish up. Um, some new GraphQL uh, stuff for Mojo. That's interesting. A new uh, blog post about this on blogs.pearl.org. And uh, this is from our old frenemy Mohawk, also known as Ed J or I think Guggleworth or I don't know. He's, he's anonymous. And he's been a help and a hindrance. So thanks for... Mohawk for existing, I guess. But anyway, here's uh, this is a convert plugin for Mojo uh, for GraphQL. I have never used GraphQL um, myself. I'm sorry, um, but it's a a query language um, for your a for an API. So it's an open source data query and manipulation language for APIs. Um, I'm sure that's pretty neat, and if I ever need to write an API, I might use that. And um, who knows, maybe, maybe the people that are writing some medicine pan software and are listening to me speak right now may need to use that at some point. Um, a few other interesting items. Oh, our old friend Alexander Carolus. Sorry if I'm getting that wrong. Um, Gandalf, I believe, uh, is one of his nicknames, but uh, he has uh, posted about RX Pearl. It's uh, it's something that works like RxJS, and that he needs people to help him write some documentation. So let's see, RxJS. Um, I ha again, this is something that I have not actually used myself, but it's for reactive programming uh, with observables. 
um, and this is will uh, is supposedly makes it easier to do asynchronous or callback based code. So um, let's see. Dean is giving us more comments. GraphQL is a standardized API for data retrieval. Very cool. Thank you. And Dean also says if you're doing REST, I assume a RESTful type interface, you should look at it. Probably your life will be. Probably my life will be something, but I don't know what because that was the end of the message. My life will be something. I don't know what. Will be better, will be easier, will be more fancy. I don't know. But uh, yes, whoever's listening to this, if you can give uh, our friend Alexander Carolus some help writing the documentation for his RX Perl software, that would be pretty neat. Um, and uh, hello, Alexander. Good to see you, sir. Thank you for all of the chats you've given me over the years. <clears throat> and um, let's see, one or two other things. So there was a, a live coding video for the Pearl Weekly Challenge of week 64. Wow, that's pretty cool. This is by um, Richard Park. Oh, no, wait, this was inspired by Richard Park. And um, the actual video itself, uh, or the live coding session, is posted by Mohammed. Awesome, Mohammed Anwar. Sorry again if I'm getting anyone's name wrong. Um, but okay, so Richard Park inspired Mohammed to do a live coding session. Very cool. Hey, keep posting those live coding sessions. Um, very cool. I'm giving thumbs up and a smiley face to Mohammed. Uh, even two thumbs up, perhaps, because live coding sessions are pretty cool. Woo. Um, okay, so let's see if there's maybe one or two other things, and then we'll finish up for the day. Um, uh, Trending. Okay, this was actually what I wanted to finish on. Uh, my last idea about this uh, for today. But um, somebody had posted a. Uh, well, actually, I'll make I'll make one final mention before I get into this. So Curtis Ovid Poe <clears throat> is uh, still uh, publishing new blog posts and and announcements and code and so forth. Um, about core that's c o r and this is uh, a pretty exciting thing, although I don't have anything to do with it myself, um, but it could be a new official upgrade to the um, almost non-existent object programming model, the o o model um, for Perl because we only have one object oriented anything and that's the bless. Uh, operator in Perl and uh, and everything else is built manually. I had to design my own um, object-oriented system several times, including the most recent formal formalized uh, design for the R Perl optimizing compiler because I had to compile objects somehow, and uh, and Moose was way too much and and all that. So. Um, if core can be simple and clean and not too meta mop, meta object protocol, super ultra high magic y, then, then I will definitely consider upgrading the R Pearl optimizing compiler so that it actually um, will use core and we can, we can then do away with my own invented um, object model as much as I. Uh, would hate to have to throw away my own hard written code, um, but uh, that's that's hard written like hard earned, not hard written like hard coded. Uh, there's a bit of that too, but <clears throat> we won't mention that stuff. So the uh, the new core project is is exciting, and and I'm very hopeful that it can be much more simple than Moose, and it can be like uh, like a very simple. Um, Mo even simpler than than mouse, and uh, and it, it, it very well may be, 
And, uh, and if it is, then it may become an official part of the Pearl 5 Core, C-O-R-E, and then it will be shipped with all the new versions of Pearl, and then we can uh, utilize that as, as uh, the official part of our compiler. So, okay, moving on from Core to the last piece of news for today. We just hit the 40-minute mark, and I was only planning on going for about 30 minutes today, so I've already gone over my... I just love talking about Pearl. Don't you guys? I mean, uh, I could just, you know, go on for days and days and hours and hours and hours at a time. Um, okay, last final thought. Final thought for the day. Final piece of, uh, of Pearl news or, uh, or Pearl-related stuff for today. Somebody posted a... Uh, <clears throat> A trend about Linux and the claim that Linux is uh, declining, which is pretty hilarious, um, considering Linux is is you know the the foundation that everything is pretty much built on nowadays, including all all of the important Perl software and so forth. So. Um, it, it's uh, it's interesting that people would graph this this long thing over 15 years and show that Linux has been going down. And you can you can see this um, <clears throat> graph of Linux is going down, Ubuntu is going up, and then it evens out, and Perl is is just slowly going down as well. Um, yes, it is. I presume accurate that there have been fewer searches for the term Linux. And, um, and uh, yes, I will accept that. But can we use that as an accurate metric or measurement of, of significance or popularity or, or overall deployment or importance uh, in some way? And uh, I think the answer is perhaps if you correlate it to a whole bunch of other data, but, but just on its own, the answer is no, because what we're looking at here is number of searches. And what does that mean? It means that uh, 15 years ago, people were having way more questions, to put it politely, about Linux, or perhaps to be more accurate and truthful and hard-hitting, boom! Uh, people had more issues or challenges or problems and bugs with Linux and, and uh, things that they were trying to get fixed on Stack Overflow or just chat rooms or Google searches or whatever metric this is that we're looking at with this Linux decline, the quote-unquote Linux decline. I have, I have not perceived any Linux decline at all. I have perceived a slow and steady growth of Linux taking over uh, permanently, almost, uh, it would seem, on the server side of, of the equation, um, but also slowly gaining ground on the desktop and, and uh, user uh, side of the equation. So I, um, I, uh, <clears throat> I do not perceive that Linux in, is in decline whatsoever. Um, and, you know, this is actually the same exact argument that we have put forth in the past on multiple occasions about um, the legacy nature of Perl, how Perl is still um, important, and, and how it is simply um, uh, receiving fewer Google searches. And, and, and um, the problem is that when you tell people stuff like, Perl is in decline because there's less Google searches, or Linux is in decline because there's less Google searches. Middle management, which unfortunately has some decision-making authority, will go out there and say, Linux is dying, Perl is dying, I need to switch over to Python running in Windows, or PHP running on my MacBook, or whatever their alternative that they've come up with. And uh, whatever that may be, and, and whatever it is, it's not Perl, which is our number one goal. And, uh, and in this case, it's not Linux, which I put forth as being 
um, critical to the survival of Perl because without Linux, you you don't have the uh, the soil in which to plant and grow uh, Perl software and applications and servers, to use a very crude analogy. But uh, but we have to have a Perl friendly operating system, and and as much as I'm sure uh, BSD could attempt to fulfill that role. Um, that that operating system is, to put it bluntly, Linux. And if you're using a non-Linux operating system to try and run Perl, then God bless you, good luck. And 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 even within that, I, I specifically promote and and support commercially um, and professionally uh, X Ubuntu because it's it's almost flawless in its Perl performance. And who would want to add extra headaches to your Perl life when you already have client code and experimental stuff and new, new modules that you're working on? I mean, you want Perl to just work. You want your operating system to just work. So um, we, have, we have the same argument that Perl is, uh, is not really dying not in that sense um, of, of uh, a total black terminal death uh, of, of just the black plague coming upon us um, but but there is the challenge of declining searches being a feedback loop where it makes human beings believe that Pearl is dying and then they stop funding Pearl projects and they stop hiring Pearl programmers and then Perl really does suffer because of that. So um, this is all marketing. We cannot rely solely on our technical value proposition. We must rely on marketing. We did a whole several, several episodes about marketing. And um, we'll continue to talk about marketing almost indefinitely until we put Perl back on top. And Perl, until Perl is number one again. So um, I leave you with that. You can go check out the, um, the, the Perl and Ubuntu and Linux graphs that, uh, that Dean the Machine Hampstead has posted uh, just on June 10th, two days ago, in our Perl programmers group. And um, yeah, so shoot me any other items of Perl news you want me to bring up next week. Um, I will be putting together a whole new set of, uh, of ideas and topics for the upcoming shows. We do like this um, ability to have a few shows that are more off the cuff and are more um, informal. We can take uh, more broader questions from the audience and, and have uh, more of a uh, general interest slant with news items and so forth. And, um, and we'll go back and forth. We'll, we'll have really uh, uh, um, firmly formatted shows and we'll have very loosely formatted shows and and uh, it will be a grab bag a mixture it will be the Pearl Town Hall so with that I I thank you all for coming and joining us today on on another episode episode number 10 the big one -o of the big Pearl Town Hall and, uh, and yes, please join us again next week for uh, exciting episode number 11. Uh, maybe we'll talk about Pearl 11. Who knows? But we'll definitely talk about something interesting. And, uh, and we'll definitely take your live questions and have uh, interactions and, and all sorts of interesting, exciting new stuff about Pearl. So without further ado, um, this is once again your fearless leader, the acting mayor of Pearl Town, Will the Chill, signing off saying, stay safe and stay Pearl. Thank you and good night.